We reviewed the homework. I hope you understood the objectives and resources you have. Now we will talk about the data and the features, the targets, and some concepts of trading. The data set represents five instruments of Nasdaq Helsinki Stock Exchange. High frequency trading doesn't operate on the scale of hours, minutes, and even seconds. At HFT, we trade on the scale of nanoseconds, at most microseconds. The benefit here is that we perform a vast amount of uh, frequent transactions, speculating on rates which are impossible for a human. Here, we exploiting the logic of a limit order book. Limit order Order book is electronic order book, a single place where all the traders submit orders through network. Then the order is delivered to the exchange through public internet. So if we trade in HFT, it would be nice to live right near the exchange and have that cable so that our orders could be submitted as fast as possible. To the right here, you can see a schema of limit order book. On the y-axis here, you see the share price. The share price here is given in um, oriented units. So this one is 95 cents, 96 cents. We don't have level for 97 cents because nobody put a buy order at that price. The rows are orders. Here we see prices at which order was placed. So we have two kinds of orders, buy orders and sell orders. Buy orders generate the traders who want to buy the share and the sell Orders are generated uh, by people who want to sell the same share. Together with the buy and sell, when a trader submits an order, it adds desired price, wanted price to sell and wanted price to buy. Then all of the orders from all of the traders with timestamps, according timestamps, put in a single place. And this place is a limit order book, which you see in front of you. Here, each price for buys and sells creates a level. We have a level of order of LOB at 95, 96, 98, 100 at the buy side. And at the sell side, we have levels 101, 102 and higher. They are sorted. We do that to perform trades. And how the trade is performed? When the bid is put at the ask side of the equal price, so when I want to buy something at 101 price, my bid is matched to an ask because somebody wants to sell the same share at the same price I bid. It, it creates a transaction or close event on the market. I pay the fee for transaction. Seller also pays fee. And then this level of ask cuts down from 31 to 21 because 10 shares were traded. This is the logic of limit order book. This thing is dynamic. It changes all the time. All the orders put in sequence according to the timestamp. For simplification, you see only five levels to each side, but there are much more. So we figure out how the LOB works. What is the levels? Levels is just a price. Volume of LOB is just a sum of all orders on an ask side and on a bid side. As well, volume can be applied to each level. We see here 31 ask orders at 101. Again, all bids at the same price and with the same time step, create level. This level is called best bid price and this best ask price. They are the closest levels. If we subtract 101 minus 100, we will get the spread between best ask and best bid levels. The spread was one of the features in your homework. The spread could be calculated between the closest levels and between all other levels in pairs. But the most informative is the spread between the closest levels. So again, this is the price. The price defines the level of limited order book. Ask level of 101 has size 31. Ask level of 102 has total size of 64. And uh, ask level 105 has size 9. Limit order book matches sell and buy orders against each other at the same price. Best ask is the maximum buying price of the order book that was requested by traders. Best bid is the minimum selling
price of the order book requested by buyers. The volume is shown in horizontal bars and the volume could be thought of as the volume of each level of order book as well as the volume of a bid side, volume of ask side and the volume of the whole limit order book. Our data set has snapshots of a limit order book. Limit order book changes every minimal time delta the market allows. Let's imagine it is one millisecond. So every one millisecond will be different state of limit order book. So the data is actually sequence in time of the states of the limit order book. One state of limit order book is called snapshot. So the data is a sequence of snapshots. This sequence forms a time series. The total amount of data is 10 days. There are almost 4 million consecutive samples in these 10 days. The data set was already normalized and there are three options of normalization. There are Z-score, there are min-max, and there are other. I recommend you to use one of these. Normalization heavily affects the results. Since the nature of the limit order book itself is highly stochastic and could be spiky, your extremums skewed all your data because your scalers will automatically take it into account and the rest of information just become meaningless. You have to avoid it. The way for it is choosing appropriate scaler. Also try to drop uh, outliers. But the good news is that the features were already generated. As well, there are labels. There are labels for five classification targets. These labels will be used for supervised algorithms. RL doesn't need that because RL works directly with the data. Good news also that the data contains train test splits. The splitting was performed in a certified cross-validation formulated in a walk-forward manner. There are five stocks traded and uh, all the data sets for all the days and all stocks were already split for you into nine folds each. There are 10 levels of limited order book recorded, five levels of buys and five levels of asks although there are a lot more on each side. This vast amount of data is called the iceberg. The time between events is irregular. It means that the states of a snapshots delivered to you have some unconstrained time delta between them, which is not known in advance. The time between the rows is not equal, but they contain snapshots. You know exact moment this state of the market was recorded. In other words, time intervals between two consecutive events can vary from milliseconds to several minutes of difference. The trades happen only when the market is open. The official market opening time is from 10 to half past 6 p.m. According to Helsinki local time, it is recommended to cut daily time half an hour after the start and before the end because typically anomalous event happen there, the trading regime is not typical. So these periods of time will just skew any of your model. What is your target? Your target is future mid price. Data set contains recorded limit order books for five stocks. Here we can see the name of the stock. The data which you see is not the raw data produced by market. Rather, it is post-processed heavily data. The, the information is rather represent events of any kind on market. Events could be order placement, order cancellation, order modification, deletion of order, trade closed, uh, transaction performed, and other. So those files delivered from the socket in a form of messages. The message could be cancellation, submission, and execution of order. It is parsed to re reorder because due to network delays, some orders and events may be out of order and we have to do windowing to put them in a correct order. Also, the feature generation ha happens here and here you are at the C stage. This is the data set you see. With feature generated with a reconstructed order book, and the reconstructed message list. Now you, you have the friendly setup to do machine learning. One day represent a vast amount of trades on five instruments, one file for each instrument and each day. Also, there are meta information in form of messages for order submissions. There is information about trades, the type of trade, was it a buy, sell, what was the price, 
what was the quantity and the timestamp of that event. There is information about the cancellation of orders and administration messages, like halts of trading, the security information, etc. Start end of trading days and the state of market segments, like the market open or closed. Also, there is a net order imbalance. Here is the example of a message, which you can find in the data. Uh, it has the ID, which, which simply ID of a package delivered from the exchange. The packages are the bunch of events. Each event has a timestamp in a nanosecond. The price defines the level of a limit order book. The quantity is amount of shares allocated at this timestamp at this price level. Here, the best ask price will be 126,100 and the amount will be 70. So here will be 1261000 and here will be 17. This defines the state of a LOB and the event either cancellation, the order was canceled, uh, a submission uh, event when the order was placed to one of the sites and execution is when the order was submitted at the bid side and then it matched the 17 shares at the ask site so that the trade was executed and uh, these 17 positions closed from both sides. Then we turn that messages into partitioned by level and then we have quantity of each on each side and then we have mid price calculated. One level is same mid price. The tick size is the smallest possible gap between the asks and bid price. Here is one cent. Prices then multiplied by 10,000 just to avoid floats because floats will take two times more space than ints. So they just turn price into ints multiplying per 10,000. 